It is important to begin with first understanding the personality of the saber. This means developing an understanding of its limits and the change is possible when in motion. The first and best exercise to do this is called stroking back and forth with the saber. The feet step apart, the tip is held straight up, and the hand then smoothly rotates it from side to side. Slowly, once the motion has been mastered and a suitable amount of practice time has been achieved, the other hand enters into the practice like this, and the eyes watch the tip of the saber. Pay attention that the hilt goes completely from one side to the other, but the tip remains in the same place. The motion of the tip should be slight, but the arc of the hilt should be large. Time should be spent on this first exercise to become accustomed to its weight and movement. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. Once a fair amount of time and practice has been achieved by stroking back and forth with a saber to understand the strength and techniques involved, you can increase the amount of strength needed in your arm by lowering the point of the saber downwards to it being held horizontally in front of you. That is, the tip is even with the hilt strokes. This should be done by beginning vertically and then slowly lowering the tip down, slowly, slowly, until your skill enables you to have it horizontally in front of you. Pay attention that your other hand is held naturally open, which is the correct way. I will now demonstrate the correct practice with the tip of the saber held at even height. Next is the chopping with the saber training method. Chopping with the saber also has two different training methods. The first begins in a horse stance, the back of the blade resting on the left arm. It is then arced over to the right side with the left arm. The right arm controls the speed and location of where the saber chop stops. It then raises it back up and over to the left arm. This developed the left arm's strength in arcing the saber upward and particularly the strength in the right wrist to control the location of the chop. I will now demonstrate the correct practice.
The second method is done chopping to the front of the body. One can simply chop and then arc back to one side of the body so that the motion has a chop, scraping back, then lifting and chopping very close to the side of the body. Make sure the tip does not drift off to the outside, as it should come in as close as possible. The finger should hold the handle more loosely, and the wrist must be very flexible. The motion is a scrape and chop, scrape and chop, scrape and chop. The left hand can support the right wrist. This exercise develops the strength of the wrist, elbow and shoulder, as well as the dexterity of your body's motion. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. Of course, one can chop on the left and right sides of the body. Chopping to the right and then left is really with the flow and then against the flow motion change. One must stay relaxed and the forces are still scrape chop, scrape chop, scrape chop, scrape chop, scrape chop. Note that the saber scrapes to either side but chops to the middle. Pay attention to the smooth motion of the body as the saber moves side to side between the chops to the middle. This is important in developing body dexterity as well as harmony and movement between the body and the saber. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. I will next demonstrate the arcing saber training methods. Starting with the right hand, the saber blade arcs upward from the side of the body. It arcs up, arcs up, arcs up. It can also be practiced on just one side or from one side to the other. It can also be done with either one hand or both hands. There is a great similarity between the arcing and the chopping. Again, you are training the flexibility of the hand as the saber moves. As with the chopping, each arc should come to the middle in front of you. The motion should be relaxed and again there is an arc scrape, arc scrape pattern. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. As I said, arcing can be done to both sides. I will now demonstrate that.
I will next demonstrate the pushing and pulling the saber training method. The pushing and pulling the saber method especially trains the palm of the hand as the saber rolls back and forth between push and pull. In a stationary posture, the legs step into the basic stance, the right hand grasps the handle and moves the blade from the right to the left side. The left hand rests upon the back of the blade, the left fingers grasping the underside of the blade. Notice I have the handle pressed against the side of my left waist. This is the pulling method. The left hand then pulls the blade back across. The tip arcs up and around to the left and then is pushed to the right. Again, it is pulled across the front of the body. The tip is then rolled up and around and then pulled back at an even height to the left side. The saber is then pulled back, rolled over and then pushed forward, then rolled and pulled. This primarily trains the hand's movement along the blade as the saber moves. Note that one should not hold the blade too far out, nor too close in. Notice there is a slight bend in the arm, and the waist is held taut. That is what you are looking for. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. I will now demonstrate several different combinations of saber training methods. First, begin in this position. Chop once, chop again, turn the body, advance step and chop again. Watch how it goes. As a training method, it is called turning the body chopping method. In the form, it is called windmill saber. Pay attention that first there is the chop, then the body turns as the saber comes back and around. The body must follow the momentum of the saber to complete the move correctly. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. Next I will demonstrate the second turning the body chopping method. As the Bagua saber is large and as it is heavy, it is quite different from other sabers used in other systems. This is very apparent in the turning the body training methods. This next method is an upper level turning the body method. I begin with the saber resting on the shoulder and then I push it forward and upward, the front foot advancing forward at an angle. The left foot back steps through, the body turns and then I push again. Notice that it is not the saber which moves, but the body that moves around the saber. 
pencil. This is very different from other saber methods, which have moves such as saber circles the head. These kind of saber moves are not usually used with the Bagua saber. Instead, it is the turning of the body methods that are trained. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. Notice the angled step. That is the basic idea. Here it is again. The next is the lower level turning the body method. The saber sweeps out, again I backstep, I turn like this and step. Both the upper and lower method trains the waist and legs ability to turn, rotate and twist. It also trains the whirling and pressing of the saber. To benefit, you must pay attention to the minute details. However, it is very similar to the upper method. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. This next turning method is known as the left-right turning the body method. The left-right method begins with a sweep of the saber and then a smooth step forward. The body then turns underneath as I come around and push outward. This is immediately followed by a back step to come around again. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. Next, I will demonstrate the stabbing with the saber from behind the back training method. The foundation for this move is the pushing and pulling the saber training method. One should be familiar with the pull, push, pull, push maneuver, as it is from here that the saber is brought around like so. It is then brought back out and returns to the pull. The difference is, as you come back, the wrist lifts up and relaxes as the tip goes down. The left hand only holds the back of the blade with the index finger and thumb. The back of the blade rests on the body as the tip is brought to the front. Notice the left hand's position here under the right shoulder. The eyes look at the tip of the blade. It is then brought back around. This training method is taken from the large saber form and is also known as the monstrous python wraps around the body. I will now demonstrate the correct practice.
I will next demonstrate the stabbing with the saber training methods. There are many different ways of stabbing with the saber. The first is stabbing from a static body position. The saber is stabbed out to the side and then pulled back in. Stab out and then pull in. This primarily trains the speed at which your arm is able to expand out and then contract in. The saber must be held horizontally to the ground, the wrist should be held taut, and both hands should be used together in the drill. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. Continuing with the stabbing methods, the next involves turning the body as you stab. Beginning from this stance, the saber starts outward and is raised up and over. The body is then rotated before stabbing out again. This develops your coordination as you turn the body and execute a large circle with the stabbing motion. The blade of the saber should be kept as close to the body as possible. Make sure it does not stray too far out from the body. It also has the function of training your balance in the midst of the rotating and stabbing motions. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. Another stabbing method, which is slightly more complex, involves a change in the feet in the midst of arcing and turning. This is what I mean. If we begin in this posture, the saber is brought up and over, the tip comes down along the left hand as the body turns behind, but here the knee is brought up before the stab. As you can see, not only is there an additional movement with the knee, but the saber also executes a sweeping motion. In comparison to the other two, this is a harder training technique. Thus, it is imperative to pay attention to the harmony of the hand and foot, the saber and the stepping, and how they work together. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. The next method of stabbing with the saber that I will demonstrate here is harder than the other methods shown so far. So please watch carefully. First we begin in this posture. The saber again comes up, 
paying attention to its harmony with the left hand, and then comes down in front of the body and stabs back to the right side, flipping over upon the extension. This trains the ability to use the saber and the smoothness of the body's motion to stab to the side. It increases the dexterity of the shoulder. But please, and I say this over and over again, only attempt this practice after developing a strong foundation in the previous ones. This training method, which is drawn from the large saber form, is called the sparrow hawk penetrates the forest. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. Yet another stabbing method to train is known as glancing left and right. Notice it begins with a pulling motion to the side, the blade facing behind. There is a fast hilt strike to the right, a stab to the left, then the hilt pulled back to the right before sweeping around to a pulling motion to the left. One, two, three, four. First pull to the side, second is a hilt strike, but notice the blade is now facing to the front. Notice the change from behind to in front. Third is a strong stabbing motion with the blade facing downwards. The fourth brings the saber behind the head, hilt striking with the blade facing upwards. That is the basic requirements. Pay attention that the motions are all horizontal, that is to say whether stabbing or striking, it is all happening in one line. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. Another training method is the lion shakes its head. I circle here and then go underneath. Rest on the shoulder, circle, then go through. Rest on the shoulder, circle around once, twice, then go through. Rest on the shoulder, circle around once, twice, then go through. Rest it on the shoulder, circle around once, twice, then go through. Rest it on the shoulder, circle around once, twice, then go through. Rest it on the shoulder, circle around once, twice, then go through. 
Rest it on the shoulder, circle around once, twice, then go through. Rest it on the shoulder, circle around once, twice, then go through. Rest it on the shoulder, circle around once, twice, then go through. This is called the lion shakes its head. In working with the saber, there is also a flying turning training method, which is known in the install Bagua saber form as shooting stars catch the moon. The basic concept is the saber is brought up to rest on the shoulder, then the foot opens, hooks, opens, hooks, opens, hooks. This is the stepping used to create a whirling motion with the body. Notice that in the move, I use both the tip and the hilt to strike opponents. Notice the harmony of the hilt and the opening of the foot. As I go, both hands come up. This method develops coordination in a high-speed whirling motion. I will now demonstrate the correct practice. In the install Bagua saber form, it is known as shooting stars catch the moon. The saber is brought up to rest on the shoulder, then open hook, open hook, open hook, and then circle and then through. Open hook, open hook, open hook, and then a circle, and then through. Open hook, open hook, open hook, and then a circle, and then through. As you see, it finishes with the lion shakes his head move. As for basic saber training methods, I will stop the demonstrations here. A person can, of course, according to their situation, their strength, can make the moves larger or smaller or practice for longer or shorter periods of time. They can also be combined into different combinations and repetitions. One should also train the left hand after training the right. One can practice with a static stance and one can practice with stepping. For example, with the arcing chops, one can step with the feet. One can step backwards as well. Chopping is no different. All of these variations are acceptable. It really is a question of the different situations of a practitioner that define what different types of variations can be done. One can, after time and practice, practice at a lower and lower height. With this flexibility, one can advance in saber skill at the fastest possible speed, becoming used to the saber and its movements. I will now demonstrate basic circle turning with the saber. The basic saber turning methods begin simply and become more complex. To begin, one starts with this basic position. The right foot then steps forward as the saber blade is brought to the left side. The hand should not hold the saber too tightly as the hilt is pushed up and then outward. It should be pushed to this position and the left hand should press at this place. Notice the wrist is slightly higher than the shoulder and the blade comes close to the body at the left hip. The saber is brought down and through. The left leg steps out and the saber is brought around. This is the lion holds a ball posture. Note that the saber tip is not held too high. It is lower than you think. The other hand naturally raises up and outward. This is the correct posture. One can turn for a length of time suitable to their situation. Pay attention that you do not bring in the hilt by shortening the arm. Stretch the arm out as far as possible. The eyes watch the tip of the saber. As you can see, the size of the circle is larger than the circles we turn in the palm forms. This is because in this posture, the tip of the saber is at the center of the circle. But you will see that in turning there will be small circles and there will be medium circles. The size of the circle changes with the different saber postures. Again, remember that turning depends on your situation and you can turn more or less depending on that. 
you can stand tall and you can crouch low. These all depend on where you are in your practice. Watch as I move into the second posture. I chop and step with the left leg, the hand on top in the splitting the mountain method. I continue the change with the riding the boat separating the water's move before lifting the saber up and around into the green dragon springs from the ocean. Notice that this hand is placed under the other elbow. The tip of the blade should be horizontal and it should not be out to the side but straight along the line of the body. The saber should be held high as you turn. When it is time to move into the third posture, hook the left leg, turn the body as the hand rotates, the left hand beneath the right elbow. This is called the unicorn spits out the book. When turning the unicorn posture, make sure the blade faces upward and the forearm is rotated so the palm is up. In comparison, this posture is more demanding and difficult. Again, make sure the supporting hand is beneath the elbow and again the circle is large. The next change has an arc to the left, then a right foot advance with another arc, then a retreating step as the saber comes back and into the black bear carries the mountain posture. The requirements here are that the wrist is held straight. It cannot be rolled down or turned up. It needs to be straight and the arm held taut. The tip of the blade comes around and behind as the arm circles out and around. The supporting hand is held behind the back in the classic bear position as you turn the circle. Changing, the saber comes around in the horizontal sweep of a thousand soldiers move and then around into the golden rooster enters battle. Notice that the hand does not really support the blade. If your strength is not enough, then you can let it rest on the supporting hand. But the proper position is that it is placed in but not held by the supporting hand. The arm should be extended out so the saber is not too close to the chest as it should be out in front. You push the saber forward and then split the mountain before bringing the saber back around into the monkey king prays with incense posture. Pay attention to the chops to one side, then the other, before the saber is brought back. The left foot hooks around, and the circle reverses directions, and the silver snake enters its whole posture. The saber is held with two fingers, the tip is angled down and behind, as the hilt pushes out and around. Here the inside foot hooks around, as the saber is brought over the head, and to rest on the supporting arm. The foot opens as you turn the phoenix spreads its wing posture. From the phoenix spreads its wings posture, the saber rolls around the hand into the pulling position known as the autumn wind sweeps the leaves. The saber is brought back around and over in the part in the clouds to see the day move. The hilt is placed into the supporting hand, closing with the finishing move that returns to the beginning.